It's now time for On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson. The conversation will range from local dialogue to international. This show is meant to enlighten, inform, and to inspire. On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson begins now. Hello and welcome to On the Line. I'm your host, Cheryl Wilkerson. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday morning, a very special Sunday morning indeed. And it is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We love and appreciate you so much. This is the thing about Father's Day. Father's Day, they always say they don't get the love that they get on Mother's Day. I don't understand that because everything lately has been Father's Day. Father's Day began in the United States in the early early 20th century. It was to complement Mother's Day in celebrating fathers, fathering, and fatherhood. So it all started in Spokane. Washington. Mm. So today we got a little round table going on today with some fathers, grandfathers and fathers that have been put in unique positions. So we welcome to the program DJB, my co-host in the morning. Check us every morning. 6 to 10, the Fresh Start Morning Show. Thank you, B. You're welcome. I love that plug. All right. It wasn't at, shameless at all. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> no shame in my game. Also, everybody knows him. DJ Heart Attack. The legend. the legend and the 757. Do I even do your real name? Do people you even read your real, name? You real do name. people know that? I, a lot of people don't, but you no, can say We're we going to stay with DJ Heart Attack okay. because everybody knows that. Okay. But, well, business wise, go ahead and say the real name. Okay. Michael Maison. Yes. So he is here at the radio station in a leadership capacity as well. So it is Father's Day. First thing I want to say to the both of you is happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's get started with you, DJ Heart Attack. You are a father in a, you're a grandfather in a unique way. Yes. And that is just as important as fathers that come to us traditionally. Yes. A stepfather and a grandfather Mm -hmm. of uh, uh, daughter Skylar and two two sons, two two grandsons. And... But they live, they live in Ohio, so I only met them once. Okay, okay, but okay. If you say remember the name, ah, uh, that's that's because I the, the the connection with their mother and 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 our family is distance. So um, I don't have the opportunity of reaching out and grabbing them and saying, "Hey, come on, follow me, let's go do this." But my granddaughter Skylar, she's always around me. Okay, she is. We have seen pictures of her, and we have seen her grow up, and she is a joy. So did you ever think you would find yourself as a stepfather, and how do you view that role? Is that like a father, or are there differences? Father. uh, I think life, you never know how life is going to turn out for you. You just live live in your life, and then when you find that right one, that person that you really care about, and then all of a sudden you see that there is family there already, Mm -hmm. you just accept it. I I turned and accepted, you know, uh, her son and her two daughters. Mm -hmm. And then the middle middle daughter, um, Ariel, had, had Skylar. So now that came into play. I don't even know if I like the word step. DJ B, you? Nah, I don't like that word. Tell I, us about your family. Uh, so between my wife and I, there's six. Mm-hmm. So we are a blended family. I have kids, she has kids, but we all refer to, they're our kids. We treat, treat them We treat them all the same. And I have five grandkids. And I don't, we never use that word step, you know, on either side. It's just, you know, it's our family. So I'm I dad and we pops. Don't, we don't use that word you know either. I mean? It's just that it, you it's know, what it is so legally. So know how yeah. it's, you know, for me to say how it is, but but overall, when they come to me, I always say, you know, pop. Right, right. Pop. Yeah. yeah. Pop attack. So, you know, great words and stuff that they use at me, and I'm like, yo, come on, let's go, go let's go do this. So, so step is out. Is bonus okay? I see a lot of people using that. Do yeah, we? it's a bonus because clearly somebody's missing in most cases, which is sad to say. Mm-hmm. So, and... It's nothing to step up and fill that role as a father. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and even if the other party is there as well, it's a, it's a bonus. It's you, a bonus. It's a bonus. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I was blessed to have my parents. They're still together. They're 52, 53. 
um, years in marriage. I'm glad you brought that up. And I just want to tag team you on that. That mm-hmm. exists because I met a couple the other day married 66 years. So I don't like for people to say it doesn't exist it because exists. your parents. And, my parents, yeah. my mm-hmm. uncles and uncles, my grandparents, my great grandparents, which I had the honor to meet, they were all together. So I came from that family structure and um, of staying together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As far as relationships and marriages. And it's it's beautiful. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's beautiful. And mm-hmm. just, uh, but you use that word bonus. I've never had, you know, a chance to have another parent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't want to or need it, but I'm just saying, like, mm-hmm. that seems like a bonus to me. More yeah. people to love you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Holiday season, you got extra. Okay. So why does Russell Wilson get so much crap? Because he has stepped in as a bonus dad to his wife's children. I don't know. What in the because celebrity I've done world? The, yeah, that's that? weird. Yeah. It's weird because uh, you know what? I guarantee you, the people that he's getting backlash from, it's it wasn't in their situation probably. Because you know, I've stepped in and I enjoy it, so I see the joy in it. I don't understand why somebody will frown upon that mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you, st- you know, what I mean, mm-hmm. of people, there's people that have adopted. There's people that have, you know, everybody has God kids, right? And the purpose of that is if something happens to those parents, you take responsibility. Correct. What's the difference? Correct. If, if you're in that situation, like you're, yeah. you're Correct. now the parent. You're now nurturing. You're now raising. You're now taking care of. You know. And that's what a parent is. Just because you had a kid, and that don't make you, uh, what is it? That doesn't make you a fu- a dad. You leave right, me. right. I, I can't see get where the terminology. You, you know what I'm saying? Just because you had kids and you're not taking care of your kids, that doesn't make you a father. Right. You feel yeah. the same way? Yeah. Yeah. Because I got a lot of god kids. Mm-hmm. A lot. You know. And. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm a, I turn around and look at, at some of them. When when you catch them when they're young, very young, and they see you come around and you're always saying, come on with me, let's go get some ice cream, let's go let's pull a book in front of them, do different things in front of them, they have the utmost respect of you being there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. doing that, that period of their learning. Mm-hmm. 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 And... Sometimes you, you you never know that you're dropping nuggets on them all along while you're talking to them. You know, watch, hold on to your money, uh, put this away, uh, read this book, get more knowledge on this. I don't want you hanging out in the streets. Um, this isn't good for you. Those different things that you may just drop those nuggets on them and you turn around and look at them when they get older and you see what they're doing mm-hmm. and you go like, wow. Okay, here's a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Does society value fathers? So when I said at the beginning of the show, it's always the fathers say, oh, Father's Day isn't celebrated the way Mother's Day is. All we get are ties and socks and underwear. We're not respected the same way. Is that true? Um, And if so, why? I think it's 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 a society thing. Being brought up as the mother being the nurturer, the father being the mm-hmm. provider. Mm-hmm. So the the provider is providing, and that's just what what happens. Mm-hmm. The mother is nurturing. So yeah, I think the the mother is doing more work <laughs> as yeah, far as doing more work. yeah. Your job is to go out and to cover the family. You know, a male is their job to go cover the family. When they turn around and look at, like, I think it's the, like the gifts. They think, oh, I suppose to get a new suit and and this and this. And the, and the parents said, but you got everything. What else do you want? So they go and get you a tie, mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. at least a nice tie to have on. Man, bring or, those ties. Bring those you know, socks. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. You get ties. Uh, you get socks of your grandchildren, yes. right? Yeah. Yo, okay. Bring me the socks. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I think society has made it look that way. But I think, I mean, in reality, you know, there's like unwritten rules in life, I guess. Mm-hmm. And that's, I I personally, as a father, think the mother works more and deserves more recognition. So that's probably... yeah. It's just uh, mother, it's gets the fl- mother gets the flowers and the dinners and the the 
outfits, maybe go get your mm-hmm. your, your hair and, mm-hmm. and nails done. You know, fathers, you know, yeah. <laughs> we, we want to be left what, alone. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where you, gonna take, where you gonna take your dad to? You know, like <clears throat> maybe to a football, basketball yeah. game if he's into that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like you know, fathers. I don't want to do nothing. My, my, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm gonna give an example. Last year, my wife grabbed me and she said, "Come on, we're gonna go shopping." And she wanted to buy me a suit, but it was weird because this was the first time me actually in the store. We're looking at suits, and she's you do the this. buying, and it, yeah, yeah. You and then it's like, but and I'm saying no, but I, and I'm looking at the cost of it. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> Save your money. You, don't worry about this. And it's it's hard to turn around and just say let go. Mm-hmm. You know, let her to lead that yeah. providing role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. let go when you've been the one who's always thinking and trying to move forward. So, I, I've learned that I have to let go when mm-hmm. she says I want to get you something. You know, and just let her do it because it brings her joy. Yeah. Okay. You know, do you have a problem with that? DJ oh no, I let go a while ago. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you want to get it? Word. Okay. What do you do, or how do you stop? your children and grandchildren from trying to divide you and your wife. So, uh, mom, may I have this last piece of candy? No, you may not. Dad, Mm -hmm. this last piece of candy, may I have it, please? Well, we already established, don't do that. Don't go to the other party. If no means no. And if you're going over there, you're going to get in trouble again. For doing that, <laughs> right? And so, who, whatever parent made that decision, the other parent is going to, you know, is going to follow. Through. But that's something you talked about in the yeah, time. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We said because we we knew that happened. You know, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I, I tried to make life as easy as possible. So all the things I did to annoy my parents, I tried to set in stone so my kids wouldn't do it to annoy me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It's Father's Day. I'm talking to DJ Heart Attack, DJ B, and we're discussing being a father because I'm not a father, so I don't know what it's like. So what's the hardest part about being a father? Anybody jump in there. Mm. The hardest (laughs) "Mm." hardest part for me is watching my granddaughter in pain or my kids in pain. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. that's hard. You know, because you want to take the pain. Mm-hmm. I feel like I want to hold on. I, I want that. Give it to me mm-hmm. to hold on to that pain. You know, uh, uh, the, uh, but falling do you down. believe that they have to go through the pain? I yes, believe they that. do yeah. have to go through the pain. Yeah. Why? But you got to learn lessons. When you, oh, you fall and scratch your knees. I can't scratch my knees after you done fail. But but isn't there a lesson that yeah, yeah. about How not life? to fall and scratch your knees? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And <laughs> life. So I think a lot of times. We want to take things off. Our, we want life better for our kids yeah. than we had, yeah. which is admirable. But we have taken it too far, and we have messed these children up. Mm-hmm. And then when we are no longer around, they fall apart because they're not tough enough because we didn't teach them how to be tough. They never had that situation to be in. This participation award era, I can't stand yeah, what it. Is a, that, and I'm going to get cream for this one, but these early graduations, you graduate at the 12th grade. <laughs> you have worked hard all those years that is a graduation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. participation trophies for what ridiculous and what happens is so i'm it's just like with anything you do for a living if you skip a step right and then something happens you don't know how to fix what happened because you skip steps you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. if you have these growing pains then you learn how to fix an issue if you run into something. Right. And, you know, it's just like social media. You only see the results. You don't see the work ethic putting in. So you're working towards the result instead of working to be better and figuring out, oh, I got here because I was doing it this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, something just happened. How can I fix that? Well, this happened before. I know what to do to fix it. Or at the same time, you know how to prevent from something happening because you was learning a process Mm -hmm. through the whole thing. So with with you know with the kids growing up, you gotta. I, I'm with I'm with you, uh, heart attack. With you know you want to take the if if my kids is going through something in life, I would take, you know I would love to take that burden off of them. But sometimes they have to you they know have, they, you, have, they to. have to go through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because remember they're, you know they're gonna be parents if they're not parents yeah. already. So how are they gonna teach 
they, you know, do the same thing we're doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like me telling Scarlett, "Don't run in the kitchen. Don't run in the kitchen. Don't run it. Don't run in the kitchen." And she still take off like a hundred and fifty, and. That that floor isn't forgiving. That floor is like, come on, I'm waiting on you because the floor ain't gonna fill it, Mm-mm. but you fill it in the end. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, when she's crying, and it's like, oh, oh, your, your heart drops a second <laughs> or two, you know. And I I feel that for her, you know. I feel that for the kids and stuff. I just those are things that that I don't know how to put this. It's synthetic. I'm. I'm gonna say it's a, 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 a man. I'm getting choked up on saying this. I see. It's like seeing seeing a child grow, and you see the achievement. Like mm-hmm. like you know, my scholar gave me to graduate now to kindergarten, mm-hmm. and they want me there to watch her walk across the stage. Right. Because mm-hmm. you're a major part of that. Yeah. And, and that's and the father. That's the. It doesn't take blood for you to have to be a father or a grandfather to something. It's the time you put in. It's what you. The, the relationship you develop yeah. and it just you know it, it just goes goes from there that's parenthood to me yeah and mm-hmm. then I'm going back I'm, I was flashing through my phone and looking at these old pictures you mm-hmm. know the day that she was born um, she was in my arm the day that mm-hmm. she wanted to read a book she wants to get in Papa Papa sit beside Papa and read a book to her mm-hmm. um, the day that she wanted to go to the park and we tried to, you know, she wanted to get on the swings and the slide and all that great stuff. And it was just too many kids out out the park. And she got confused. Everyone, because because she was born during the time of COVID. Oh, okay. So okay. she okay. didn't have, the, the, you know, the, the, you could go outside and meet people. She was, like, in the house for almost two years. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so now when she's out in front of other kids... And they are playing, and 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 you know you got some daredevil kids. They'll they'll go up to the top of the swing and and go down, no problem. With her, it's more so like mm, she'll climb up there, but now I'm nervous to go to go down the slide. So I got to get on that, right? And then go down and put her with me and ride down with her to get her calm. So it's it's fun. Okay, let me let me ask you this. So. Naomi Campbell recently was talking about the fact that uh, she had two children by way of surrogate. And somebody, she she said something that I think is so idiotic <laughs> to the fact that the, she'll be okay. The children will be okay because she was raised by a single mother. So, you know, it's all right that there's no father there. That is the most idiotic. How, how crazy do you say in? sound saying a child doesn't need a father how idiotic does that sound when you plan not to you know i mean when you say something like that uh you mean to tell me you really honestly believe you don't want help you don't want a father figure and it's not about you it's about About them kids what a child is supposed to have what a child deserves the best they deserve to come into the best scenario that they can. They didn't ask to be here. That's the first thing. Right. And <laughs> you're going to sit there and tell me a whole man doesn't count? Yeah. My my thing is, is that when I look at the situation that I'm in, first thing I said, she is not going to be short or he is not going to be short of anything. Mm-hmm. If, I could, if the lint in my pocket is gold to them, they got it. Right. And yeah, sometimes they, you know, kids going to go for the gusto, you know. Not, right, and, right. But at the same time, you saying no, you saying I got you, you got them. Mm-hmm. But to say that I don't need, you know, everybody turns around and then when they throw, I, I don't like, well, I'm going to say this. What she is going through and she turned around and now she's with someone, mm-hmm. and especially, especially if she had the child mm-hmm. and the father or the male is not there mm-hmm. don't use the child as a pawn that, don't use true. your kids that's as a, a, as a right pawn I mean because mm-hmm. the, the way she, way you just said that it feels like well my mother had this Yeah, I was raised by my mother even though my dad was around but he wasn't there but I said I'm going to make sure whatever happens to me I'm not going to do that Correct. So for what she said right. on uh, but I don't even want to know her name now for whatever she said would be something of I'm going to block you from becoming that that male figure in my child's life because if they don't have it it's 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 hard of which way they're going to go if they're going to be the streets or if they're going to be you know uh 
well educated or if they're going to be well knowledge with someone from a male um, side speak to them how they're going to talk back how to them how they're going to react to it mm-hmm. we are talking about Father's Day we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back Welcome back to the show. We are talking about fathers today. It's Father's Day. Thank you all for joining me so much. We've been talking with DJ B. Everybody in the 757 knows him and respects him. Legendary DJ, as well as another legendary DJ, DJ Heart Attack, Michael Mazon. We've added to a mix a young man that has been a father, and his journey has been a little bit different. So we wanted to get another point of view about being a father. We welcome to the program today. Earl Sam. He's a cyber engineer and he has two children. Welcome to On the Line. Well, thank you for having me, Cheryl. No problem. Um, So your journey as a father has been a little bit different. We've been talking about fathers. We've been talking about stepfathers. And you are the father of two young adults now. But tell us about how your journey was different in that you had a loss in your life and how that affected you as being a father. Well, the loss came as as both kids were already adults. But getting to that point, my wife Cynthia, my late wife Cynthia, had uh, battled breast cancer for 13 years. Not just the breast cancer, but the some debilitating side effects from treatment. Mm-hmm. So what that meant for me, my youngest was in third grade, I think, and involved in quite a few quite a few things as both were. So that meant that I was responsible for getting them places, providing meals, and they did all of the, pretty much all the cooking, except when we did include a day when each one cooked uh, a meal, regardless of what it was. So, in the, you know, having the, you know, not having the mother to be part of uh, the event, so I had to get, I found myself a lot of times in parent organizations, the only male. Mm-hmm. But that, you know, that was just one more only because a lot of times it's only only black person as well. The only male and the only black person. Wow. Yeah. That did. Do you think that you parented differently because your wife was sick, as opposed to someone that had two parents where there was no illness and the mother and father were both in the house? I, I think so. Um, well, as we were always dealing with recurring breast cancer, which, you know, if you're maybe eight or nine or ten, that's, that's cancer, and that sounds like death. Mm-hmm. So well, it had to be that they could always express their, their their concerns or whatever they were feeling to me. So, uh, or their fears. So we always had an open. At least they tried to always have an you know, open line of communication mm-hmm. where they could say anything they wanted or express even disagree with me as long as it was respectful. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think that carried over to today as they're both adults now, mm-hmm. at least one, one with a kid of their own, uh, that you know, we still can have that, still have an open relationship and they can say anything they like as long as it's, it's respectful. As that that seems pretty fair. That probably gave them a lot of relief because they knew that they could come to dad and they could say da 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 da. That's true. All right. So I have the three of you all here. What is some good advice that you heard from either your father or a father figure in your life? that you think is so valuable that you'd like to share today? DJ B, I'll start with you. Um, well, just hearing this brother's story, um, you know, as a father, you never think about that part, that, you know, if you have to step in for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I me, it would, I think it would naturally happen. Mm-hmm. I think I will naturally uh, stepped up, because you, brother, I'm sure you naturally... You, you just, it just kicked in. It was, you know, there's no book for this. There's no book about being a father. There's no blueprint. Correct. You know, you just do it. And I applaud you for uh, stepping in and doing what you had to do for, I mean, for your family. 
I know it was a lot of sacrifices on your end. Mm -hmm. So happy Father's Day to you, because right. we do do we do Thank sacrifice. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. providers, but we sacrifice a lot to make sure everybody else is is right. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, because we're strong, a lot, we're strong, and we can deal with without. But it's hard to f have our family deal without. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, yeah. hearing hearing that story, it just opened my eyes, and you know, I I, I know I would step up with anything that would happen. You would for for my kids. I would anything yeah. for my kids. You know, right. I lose sleep for my kids. I work a lot for my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing to just step in and it, I think it's just immediate. So, happy Father's Day to you, Heart Attack. Everything you've done for your kids with Skylar, your grandkids and, and you know, with your with your kids as well. So, you know, I'm proud of you guys. You have some advice that a father figure or your father has given you, Heart Attack? I have advice from other um, members of uh, teachers okay. who always, always um, help me out um, be there be there mm -hmm. you know it's it, it's a job but you don't see it and it's a it's a care that you don't feel mm -hmm. but be there you just have to be there and by you that know, you mean what they want they they need to get lunch for school mm -hmm. they need to go to school they need to have someone sit there and help them with their math or reading or or anything that comes up just got to be there physically mentally you know, spiritually mm -hmm. it hurts emotionally it, and i'm gonna tell you one of the things that it, it it i never had my mom to show up when i was playing football I, my mom wasn't there when i um received that 300 in bowling okay um i never had my mom or dad to see the achievement of me winning the awards billboard awards for you know in radio right in radio mm -hmm. okay but i've okay. asked them later down the road you know what they thought of me and and they said, even though I couldn't physically be there, I want to let you know I would be there for you. And just to have that that in my heart, I knew they she was there or my dad was there. My dad come coming off a trip from Baltimore and he's sitting in the car saying, you know, I was uh I was riding and I just met someone mentioned your name and I said that's my son and they just came over to me. It's it's when you right just well, be there. Ball. Just be there. Earl, do you have any advice that you receive from your father that you might want to share this morning? Well, I'd like to echo what was just stated. You know, like, like you said, you know, my, my father, I, mean, I was a pretty decent baseball player in high school, but I don't think my father saw me play one game. Mm. Uh, but not because I was assuming it's not because he wanted to. My dad was a very good provider, and that, you know, that, that, took, that was number one because we went to. Well, my brothers and I, we went to Catholic school for 12 years. Mm. You don't do that for free. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we might thought that, but you don't do that for free. So, you know, in that regard, though, my, uh, what I took from my father, you always have to be sure that you can provide that for your kids. Now, from that, I also learned I had to figure out a way to do to do both, to be to provide and also make time for the, the things that they were involved in, to be there. So that, they would say, I guess, an, un, an unstated uh, lesson. I, I think my brother said this, echoed the same thing without, you know, without, without me asking him, he said the same thing. Wow. So DJ B, DJ Heart Attack, a.k.a. Mike Maison and Mr. Earl Sam. I want to thank you all for joining my program today. I want to thank you for a great discussion and I hope that there are fathers out there that realize that I, for one, and plenty of the ladies listening appreciate you all and love you all and think the world of you all and thank you all for being the men that you are. Oh, thank you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. That's right. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right. All right, you all, we will do this again another time. I'm Cheryl Wilkerson. Thank you so much for joining me on the line. And as always, behold the green and gold.